Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're talking about Wii U 3DS and PlayStation 2 emulation. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off here talking about Wii U emulation on PC with Simu. Simu just released version 1.27.1. Now, it's worth pointing out that version 1.27.1 is considered experimental. Some things might be broken, some things might not work as anticipated, but I do think it's worth checking out. And it's also worth paying attention to this very first point. The Accurate Barriers option for Vulkan is now enabled by default. So if you are having issues with performance, you can shut it off and hopefully that should speed some things up. But mind you, it also might cause some flickering graphics in the process. In addition to that, this version also introduces a bunch of bug fixes, including fixing several bugs where Simu sometimes wouldn't be able to locate a title stored in a gamepad and also fixing rumble not working. CMU's H.264 decoder now supports multiple parallel decoding sessions, so if you were in a menu in a game and the video froze, it shouldn't do that anymore, it should be okay. And it was causing crashes in Mario Tennis or Mario Tennis Ultra Smash, and that should be fixed as well. The dev team has also improved the accuracy of the emulated file system, and this should hopefully fix some crashing and deadlocks in Yoshi's Woolly World uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X and Hyrule Warriors. The game file integrity check now works for .wua files, and there's also some various compatibility improvements for niche titles. CMU is 100% free, and as far as I know here, it will be going open source at some point in the future. If you want to pick up the development version of CMU, just head to the CMU website, I'll leave a link in the description below, and once you are here, scroll to the very bottom and you'll want to click on Download Latest Experimental Version. At the time of filming here, it's 1.27.1, but it might be a later version, and that is absolutely fine. Next up, we're talking about Nintendo 3DS emulation on Android with Citra, just not the version of Citra that's on the Play Store. We're talking about two specific forks of Citra, Citra MMJ, which is geared towards performance, and the newly revived Citra Enhanced. Now in yesterday's video, we talked about Citra MMJ getting dark mode and we've got even more changes now. I'll leave a link to the GitHub in the description below. Feel free to check it out. Citra MMJ is 100% free. This new version of Citra MMJ has a couple of fixes and also introduces a new feature. The fixes are for background crashes and custom textures. And the new feature is an on-screen hotkey to open the settings menu. In my opinion here, I think this is a nice addition and I think people are going to like it. Let me know if you've tested it out and let me know if you like it in the comments below. Now for Citra Enhanced, another fork of Citra that's available on GitHub and is also free and I'll drop a link to it in the description below. Feel free to check it out. Citra Enhanced stopped development back in May, but it appears that it will be coming back. Gamer64, the main developer of Citra Enhanced, says Citra Enhanced community is very big, so we will revive the project, but we don't know how to start it. So select, continue the recent project, or take Citra MMJ as code base. And if we take a look at the results of this poll, so far, taking the Citra MMJ as code base is well ahead. I am curious to see what happens with Citra Enhanced, so I will be keeping my eye on it. And if you're trying to play 3DS games on Android and you're having problems with the official Google Play Store version of Citra, check out Citra MMJ first, and if you're having problems with that, check out Citra Enhanced. Last up here, we're talking about PlayStation 2 emulation on Android with the legendary Aether SX2. Aether SX2 just got a pretty big update. I'll be going over this update at a really high level here, but if you wanted to read the entire thing, it's available right on the official Aether SX2 Patreon page, and I do recommend checking it out. There is a ton of information in here. The very first point in this update is massive. Use software render for texture decompression type sprite draws. Fixes textures in games like True Crime, Spider-Man, Transformers, Kung Fu Panda, and more. Previously, trying to emulate games like True Crime was a massive headache, and this is a really big breakthrough for PS2 emulation. The second point in the update here also makes more games playable, and the update is fix incorrect VU clip flag in some games. Now games like The Mark of Kree and some more are playable. In prior versions of Aether SX2, sometimes if you try to change a memory card in some games, it wouldn't be detected. 
and it looks like they fixed that issue. And to further that, under the app settings under memory cards, there's a new button here to swap cards, and it will swap your cards between port 1 and port 2. And it's worth pointing out that this feature does work whether or not you're in game. Talrith has also added in a brand new feature here that is disabled by default. If you want to enable it, it will take quite a bit of memory, but at the same time here it adds the save state on shutdown and resume so it will automatically save your state every time you quit the game. Personally, I do think it's worth going to your settings and enabling this and seeing if it works for you. If you're running into memory issues, then maybe disable this option. There's also some quality of life improvements, like better button descriptions when you are binding your controller. Now, if you're using AetherSX2 on a 9 Odin and you're experiencing some micro stutter, there's a new sync to host refresh option which should help out with that. They've also added in auto 4x3 and 3x2 to aspect ratio options. Now these are just the main changes at a high level. If you wanted to read the entire thing, check out that link in the description below. I do recommend it. Now as a bonus piece of news here, a really fun piece of news. If you're wondering how Skyline is shaping up overall, although I talk about it all the time, here is a great video comparison. The Poco X3 Pro is running Skyline at the top here and running Egg NS at the bottom. It's the exact same phone running the exact same game, Cuphead. And if we take a look at the performance between the two, why don't you tell me which of these two is running better? Interestingly enough here, Skyline is using far less of the CPU when compared to Egg NS. Egg NS is taxing out this phone and the results, well, they kind of suck. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, tall stuff and no fluff. Let me know your thoughts on anything we talked about today in the comments below, and we did talk about quite a bit. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.